what's up guys it's time to see section number three which is continuous steer tank reactor for isothermal design we've seen before the batch reactor which is good because it's the fundamentals of reactor engineering and especially because we have the accumulation concept which is essentially just the derivative of the moles with respect of time but now we're going to analyze the CSTR which is a very important reactor because it's one of the most used and it is actually easy to model so let's see the methodology for batch CSTR and PFR so we've seen this before for the batch one uh, I'm going to repeat it because we use it again in the CSTR the continuous steer tank reactor so we start with the problem we start doing our general mole balance equation we apply it uh, we will see that we have no we have an inlet we have an outlet and we have no generation no we have a generation of course because we have a reactor and we have no accumulation here so essentially our mole balance gets into that and doing some math we get the design equation especially for conversion for concentration for flows, whatever. Now, in chapter 2 we've seen that if you have a, the rate of reaction in function of conversion, you can go directly and solve it. Well, this is not the case. We will be using rate loss, which are essentially uh, rate uh, or a rate of reaction in a function of concentration of any of the materials being reacted. So this is the typical one we're going to follow. And not only that, guys, we're also going to use the stoichiometric tables we saw in chapter 3. I think it's uh, section 2 or 3, I don't remember well. And since CSTR has no pressure drop, once again, this here is not included. You, you don't need to either read this or know that. Just know that with our design equations plus the, the, the rate of reaction or rate law and our stoichiometry tables we can go and if there is no change in moles which is typically for CSTR because the volumes are in general let's say constant they don't change and we have no pressure I, I told you before we have no gas phase and if we will have it which will be very strange we have no pressure drop so just combine the rate law, the stoichiometry table, and solve that. Probably it's just an algebraic or analytical procedure, and you get the answer. So yeah, once again, it's not that difficult. What we are going to see here, uh, I think CSTR is way easier than the batch, because the batch you get always a derivative of, let's say, moles with respect of time, and you have the equation, I don't know, everything here and CSTR you will see that you have no derivative so that's actually way easier now let's revisit the CSTR once again it's typical operation it's liquid phase reaction gas phase we're not going to see that probably the, there's people that use that but uh, we're not going to use that we are going to use the liquid phase which makes sense because it is very common for the CSTR to mix letter A or B they react in liquid phase and they form C in liquid phase. Uh, the assumptions we're going to do in the whole course, or at least in this chapter, is number one, it's well mixed. So I know many people will tell me if I have here A and it's reacting A into B and I'm taking away this part here. Well, many people tell me there's a gradient here. You will find a lot of A here which is true and you will find a lot of B here in the bottoms and yeah that's true but we're going to suppose that our mixing unit is so perfect that we don't have those gradients so we don't have a change in concentration so the concentration of A here is the same in concentration of A at the outlet which is not true but uh, if we want to model that it will be complicated and of course you always analyze the first ideal cases and then you make your corrections 
So if you are very interested in this topic, go to chapter, I think, 12 or 13, and you will have all the, uh, the cases where you have no ideal, uh, ideal cases. We have no change in volume, therefore no change in density. Uh, reactants enter at the same time, so we have A and B at the same time, flows per minute or per second, per hour, whatever. Uh, what I mean is we're not going to do first A and then first B, of course not. That's not a typical continuous process operation, so just suppose they're entering the same time. There are no side reactions, and not only that, we're going to work with only one reaction at the moment. If you're interested in watching or studying multiple reactions, go to chapter 6. We're going to, uh, to analyze that multiple reactions in several reactors, uh, for example CSTR, but not now. The filling time may be neglected. Actually, this one is more into batch, but I just left it there just in case you have that doubt. And finally, but not least, actually it's a very important part, is the isothermal operation. So the temperature at the beginning or at the inlet is the same at the outlet. Just keep in mind that. Now, we're going to use this space-time. We saw it in the last chapter, so hopefully you know what we are talking about. And if not, it's essentially space-time equals the volume of the reactor divided by the volumetric flow rate. And it has units of time. We're going to force this space-time into our design equations. Remember our design equation, actually, is this one here. We have an inlet, Fa inlet, and Fa1 going out. We have a rate of reaction here and a volume of the reactor. And, of course, we will have a conversion. So our design equation, independent of any uh, case, CSTR, it's always the volume equals the inlet flow times the conversion you are doing or you are designing divided by the rate of reaction at the exit gas. That's very important. So if you choose 80%, you need to find it at the 80%, not at the inlet. So having this, we can continue. Uh, the first thing I want to do is to substitute this data FA0 here with CA0, the initial concentration, times volumetric flow because I want to force this space-time and I have the volume already, how do I do to get this volumetric flow rate? Well, I just substitute this data. So I plug in this data here, conversion and rate of reaction stay the same. Just to remind you, once again, volume of the, of the reactor divided by the volumetric flow rate equals the space-time. So if I will send this here, I will have it here. Cool. So that's why I call this tau. And this part stays the same. So tau or space time is right now. This initial concentration times conversion divided by rate of reaction. And let me do the first order for a single CSTR. That means only one reactor. We have this, yes. And the rate of reaction is first order. So this is very important. And let me plug it in here. Uh, essentially, I just changed this part. And just to let you know the concentration at any time or at any conversion, the one I want is at the outlet. So let me do that. Is initial conversion, uh, no, initial concentration times one minus the final conversion you want. So you just plug this here, right here. And as you can see, con initial concentrations go out and you are left with x divided by k times the difference of 1 and conversion. Or if you do the math, I, I'm not going to do it, but just find x, you will get this value here. Now, this is very interesting factor here, this one right here. And we're going to enter into the damp color number. Actually, I'm going to break the video so you, we can analy analyze what's the damn color number.
What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.